Hi, welcome back to Lipids in Biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about a very important lipid in all cells of your body, and that's called cholesterol. And this is the biochemical structure of cholesterol down here, and we're going to talk about that in a minute and how it relates to membrane physiology, because we're talking about lipids and membranes. Cholesterol has gotten um, kind of a bum rap over the years, particularly in the last 50 or 60 so years. And if you want to learn more about why it's gotten that unfair and unnecessary bum rap, you can look more into my Controversies and Conspiracies playlist. There's a lot of interesting stuff in there. But here we're going to look at how it works in the membrane, okay, and why it does that. Cholesterol overall has three main functions. Um, it can be converted into, into molecules called steroids, which are hormones like testosterone and your estrogens. It can also be converted into bile salts or bile acids, which are molecules that help to emulsify the, uh, the fats that you eat in your diet when, you're, when they're in the small intestine. Those are called uh, emulsifiers and they're present in bile. And the third thing, arguably of equal importance, is the fact that it stabilizes the membrane the plasma membrane, and also the membranes of, of organelles and eukaryotic cells, okay? All right, so really here we're just going to look at the structure of it and talk about it. What I want to do first is talk about this part that's circled in blue, and then we'll move to the part that's circled in red over here on the left. So the part circled in blue is literally composed of nothing but carbon and hydrogen. Anytime you see a functional moiety like that in biochemistry, you ought to think it's very hydrophobic. And this is arguably one of the most hydrophobic molecules that we're ever going to see in biochemistry. There are a lot that are comparable, but this is one of the most. Um, cholesterol itself is a tetracyclic structure, which just means that it has four connected rings. Okay, If you draw it in this orientation, the ring on the very left side that has the hydroxyl group circled in red is the A ring. And you basically move left to right and count A ring, B ring, C ring, and D ring. All of the rings A, B, and C have six carbons in the ring, but carbon, or excuse me, ring D has five carbons. So there is one five-membered ring that's the D, uh, that's the D ring. Okay. You'll notice that between rings A and B there is a methyl group right here. Between uh, rings C and D there's another another methyl group right there. Okay. And then atop ring D, there's what we call the cholesterol tail. Okay, it sort of looks like a tail. And this part of the molecule adds to the hydrophobicity of it. Okay, as we're going to find, the steroids, which have this whole tail removed, are a lot more polar than cholesterol. But as, as we see, this tail is all carbon and hydrogen, so it adds to the hydrophobicity of cholesterol. And then also notice in, B, in the B ring, there is a double bond right there, okay? Now, the one thing that's really important, and I can't emphasize this enough, is that this whole thing that's circled in blue is extremely hydrophobic, okay? And I just want to make that perfectly clear. This is very hydrophobic, okay? Sometimes they call this the hydrophobic steroid skeleton or steroid nucleus, which mostly has to do with the four rings here, okay? The key is that it's very, very hydrophobic. Now, on the left side here, as you see, connected to the A ring, there's an OH group or a hydroxyl group. Okay? Now, as we know, hydroxyl groups are polar, and this is no exception. So because oxygen is more electronegative and so forth, this hydrogen develops a partial positive charge. And if you were to put this partial charge on the hydrogen in the vicinity of anything that has a negative charge, you could effectively get hydrogen bonding, get a charge-charge attraction, and that can help stabilize things. Okay? But the key is that this very small part of cholesterol over here, the OH group, is polar or hydrophilic, has a partial positive on the hydrogen. And then the vast majority of the mass and volume of cholesterol is this hydrophobic part. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to talk about how this plays a role in the membrane. Okay? Now what I'm going to do in this video, I'm just going to alert you to this. We're going to look at exactly pictorially how it fits in the membrane in the next video. I'm just going to introduce it here, okay? And, and then in the next video, we'll look at how it, how it actually inserts itself into the membrane, okay? So 
the thing we ought to know is that the cholesterol molecule is inserted into membranes parallel to the phospholipid acyl tails. Okay, so you're probably used to seeing when, when you draw membranes, right, if you were to draw a membrane like this, you see those phospholipid heads like this, and then they each have these tails that stick down like this. Okay, so if you blow one of those up, it's going to kind of look like this, right? That's your phospholipid that you see. Well, if we have cholesterol in this fashion right here, in general what's going to happen is we're going to flip that tail on its side, sort of like this, and then the tails are going to run like this. So what you can see is that the cholesterol molecule runs parallel to these tails. Okay. One thing that's also really important is that the OH group is very close to the polar head, and the tails are very close to the hydrophobic skeleton. Now, that kind of makes sense, right, because we know this, this uh, concept of like dissolves like. The steroid rings are hydrophobic along with the tail. These acyl tails are hydrophobic. So you have a hydrophobic part next to a hydrophobic part. This head of the phospholipid is polar. This OH group is polar. So maybe you can sort of think in your mind that we're going to have some stabilizing effects of putting cholesterol in the membrane. And in fact, we are, and we're actually going to look at that. Okay. So it turns out that the A-ring hydroxyl group, which is this right here, is going to hydrogen bond to the phosphate of the phospholipid polar head. So we'll look at what that looks like in the next video, but suffice it to say the phosphate of the phospholipid is going to hydrogen bond with this OH group of cholesterol. Likewise, those tails that I had, in fact I can sort of redraw those, I'll just kind of do this, the tails are hydrophobic just like the steroid skeleton, these four rings in the tail, those are also hydrophobic. So it turns out that also the tails of the phospholipid are going to have van der Waals attractions to the steroid nucleus, all this part circled in blue. Okay, so you have hydrogen bonds with the head and the hydroxyl group and then the rest of it have van der Waals attractions to each other. And this is going to do three main things. Okay, number one it's going to increase the stability of the membrane. So what that means is the more cholesterol that the cell sticks in the membrane, the more stable it becomes. All right. Now what does that mean? Well, if you have the cholesterol molecule that's essentially attracting the phospholipid tails, right, and you have the OH hydrogen bonding with the polar head group of the phospholipid, that decreases the membrane entropy, which just means that they're not, the tails of the phospholipids aren't flopping around as much. They're more or less held tighter in, in their place because the cholesterol is stabilizing them. So there's less entropy of the membrane. But what that does, and this is the key point here, is the more cholesterol that you have in the membrane, the more rigid the membrane is. Okay? So if you're, if, if as a cell, your goal is to make a very, very rigid membrane, then if you're, going to do, if you're going to accomplish this by cholesterol, then you ought to add a ton of cholesterol to the membrane. But if you were a cell that for whatever reason wanted to be extremely fluid, then you might remove all the cholesterol, or at least a lot of it, from the membrane. And so, as we say, lots of cholesterol increases membrane rigidity. Another way of saying that is lots of cholesterol makes the membrane less fluid. Okay? If you have very little cholesterol or no cholesterol, the membrane will be more fluid, okay? And what this turns out as a physi physiological result in humans is more cholesterol is in membranes in hotter climates, okay? And, and there's less cholesterol in colder climates, and this is to compensate for the weather effects of entropy. If you're living in uh, Texas in 105 degree Fahrenheit summers, okay, heat has... A, in the absence of changing any cholesterol or anything like that, heat melts things and it makes things more fluid. So the heat itself would tend to make the membrane more fluid. So to compensate for this, to keep it, to keep the membrane at a certain rigidity, you'll actually add more cholesterol to your cell membranes to compensate for the heat that's essentially melting your membrane. But in colder climates where there, that heat isn't there, Cold tends to freeze things, and it makes that would make, tend to make the membrane less fluid, more rigid. So as a result of that, cold weather will cause cholesterol to be taken out of the membranes. Okay, because if you're already if if the lack of heat in the 
in like Alaska or something, the cold is already tending to make the membrane more rigid, then you don't need that cholesterol. That's going to make it too rigid, so you're going to take it out of the membrane. So the key here is that, that point that I start. It increases membrane rigidity. Okay. In fact, um, there are obviously genetic differences here. But if you were to take people from Canada at the same time of the year, so people in Canada, and you were to compare the cholesterol in their membranes to people, say, in Central America, so like Mexico, even below that where it's really hot, you would actually find the people in the hotter climate down south, they are actually going to have, uh, they're going to have more cholesterol in their membranes. The people who are from Canada, Alaska, that area, in Siberia of Russia, they're going to have a lot less cholesterol in their membranes. And there are genetic differences, but on average, that is the case. Okay, now. That is just an analysis of the structure, and generally what it does, what we're going to do in the next video is we are actually going to look at cholesterol and how it actually fits in to the membrane on the molecular scale. All right, so thanks for watching this. Join us in the next video. I uh, hope you liked it. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.